Hey, yo, what's going on guys and welcome back to another video and in today's video we are going to go over uh, the best settings for performance or you know best optimized settings for Halo Infinite Season 2. You guys have requested this and I was eventually going to get around to do it and I thought you know what why not today let's just go ahead and do it because it's not really that simple. Uh, this will be pretty quick and simple. I don't really want to talk too much in this video. Uh, I just want to show you guys what the settings are. So first thing first and settings, um, to the view, uh, you don't lose that much of a performance, uh, say on 90 FOV to 120 FOV. It's very minimal. You won't notice it at all. Uh, so play on whatever FOV you want. Uh, I can throw out a couple FOVs that are pretty fun to use. Uh, 110's fun, 105, 97, 103. Uh, those are all very fun, uh, very different. Uh, 97 is really, you know, good if you're having trouble, uh, aiming, even though it's all kind of like placebo, but the crosshair is uh, bigger on 97 uh, FOV. But yeah, for me right now, I'm on 107 FOV, uh, borderless full screen, because there's no dedicated full screen. Uh, resolution scale, I have this the lowest possible to you know save the VRAM usage. And I don't really notice the difference that much when it's set to 100% for uh, 1920 by you know 1080. Uh, so having this on the lowest to 71%, it actually gives you a lot of performance back. That's very good. Minimum frame rate, completely turn this off uh, the whole thing where it changes the graphics and stuff it's very weird um set the maximum frame rate to your monitor's refresh rate or if you just like having it set to unlimited you would you know go down and set it to you know like 300 frames per second so it could run to that maximum because i don't think there's a dedicated unlimited frame rate option uh v-sync i have this off this will add a uh, you know input delay and you don't want that for halo infinite with all the issues it already has with desyncs limit active frame rate turn that off um graphics this is obviously set to custom, anti-aliasing low, texture filtering low, ambient inclusion low, uh, texture quality. You can mess around with this. Oh, no, I believe it's texture filtering you want to mess around with. Yeah, texture filtering, uh, you don't really notice that much of uh, performance distance, and it does actually make the game a little bit, you know, look better. But I just like having it on low. Uh, texture quality, if you up this more, it's going to, you know, up the VRAM. And, you know, if you're like streaming or recording or you want the best performance possible, you kind of want this set to low. And to be honest, when it's set to low, the game still looks pretty good. Uh, geometry quality, low. Reflections, low. Depth of field, especially low. It sucks that we can't turn this off. Uh, shadow quality, low. Lighting quality, low. Volumetric fog quality, off. Cloud quality, low. Dynamic wind, low. Ground cover quality, low. Effects, you want to set this to medium. Uh, the only reason why I don't have this set to low is uh, on with the dynamo grenade set to low, you won't actually see the lightning or like the little electric strings on low. So on medium, you will see that. And that's actually really huge for uh, maps like Behemoth or Aquarius where you actually need to you know see the dynamo grenade. So definitely have that set to at least medium. Uh, decal quality, low animation quality. Just set this to max. It, there's not really a difference. Terrain quality. Um, I have this set to medium because this is basically going to be for, uh, you know, further distances away so you can see better. Um, it does help a little bit with uh, like B2B for view distance. So I have that at least set to medium and it's not really that much of a difference uh, in terms of VRAM usage, which is nice. Simulation quality, uh, Halo Infinite put out a dev blog post saying for user input, desyncs or whatever the heck they described it, you want to set this to ultra no matter what. So yeah. Uh, flocking quality low AC compute. Uh, you could turn this on. You might get uh, more frames uh, or on some machines you might get less frames. For me, I get less frames when I have this uh, ticked on. So it might work for you. It just depends on whether, you know, what machine you have. It honestly just depends on what your specs are. Uh, blur zero, screen shake zero, exposure zero, full screen effect zero, speed lines I kind of like them, but sometimes they like bug out. So I have this off for right now. Sharpening. Uh, this is really nice to have. I have it set to 75%, especially when you have stuff set to low. Sharpening kind of makes the game a little bit look a little bit better. So yeah, it's very nice. Um, so yeah, that's basically the video settings. Uh, UI. I know some people want to know my UI settings. Uh, well, I have Sunshine and then Serline um, for the UI colors for enemies and, for, uh, you know, non-enemies. And then we go all the way down here to uh, offsets. We have negative 100, negative 52, uh, 100. Honestly, you just set this to 50. I don't know why I have it set to 52. Um, but yeah, this kind of, you know, 
In my opinion, I really like this weapon offsets because it's not too out of the way where it looks kind of goofy looking, but it's like still the gun's still in your face, but also gives you nice visual clarity when you're playing, you know, ranked. So that's always nice. Um, accessibility. I have the tech size set to large. I don't like it on default. I don't know. It just looks really off to me. So that's why I have it set to large. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much the settings for uh, in-game. Now let's go ahead and jump off and we'll go ahead and take a look on what you can do to increase performance outside of the game's video settings. And then you're going to go ahead and go into your library on Steam and you're going to want to scroll down to DLC, manage my three DLC. And this is going to be automatically ticked if you have this game installed. Uh, go ahead and untick multiplayer high res textures and campaign high res textures if you have the campaign installed. Uh, not only will this give you a big performance bump, but you also save eight gigabytes on your hard drive or seven gigabytes if you have the campaign installed. So very nice and uh, good performance bump there. Jumping over to the NVIDIA control panel. If you have a NVIDIA graphics card, if you guys don't have NVIDIA, I'm sorry, I can't help you out, but there's plenty of videos out there that can help you. Um, for your monitor, just make sure it's on, you know, the native resolution. And if you have a high refresh rate, make sure you have it set to the highest refresh rate. And then for adjust image settings with preview, you're going to want to have this set to performance. Uh, by default, it's going to be set to quality. And for the managed 3D settings on global settings, if you guys want to pause the video, I will scroll down. Uh, these are pretty much what you want. Just, you know, anything related to, you know, power management, you're going to want, you know, maximum performance, nothing like that. Uh, for the latency mode, um, I just have it set to ultra. Some people say it's better to have it on or, you know, ultra. I, I just have it on ultra, to be honest. So, yeah. And for some reason, if you can't set your monitor's refresh rate in Halo Infinite, if you go to program settings and you find the Halo Infinite.exe and you scroll down, you can just manually set it to your monitor's refresh rate. If for some reason you can't do that and you can manually set vertical sync off. Then on the Windows key, type in graphic settings and this is going to pull up. You're going to want to click browse or if you click add an app, Halo Infinite might be there, but if it's not, just want to go to your program files dot you know x86 and you know go to steam steam apps common halo infinite that's going to be right here it's going to be add you're going to want to click options you're going to do high performance save that'll also juice out some performance back for you next up you're going to want to press the windows key yet again and then you're going to type in game mode and it's, this is going to pop up game mode settings make sure you have this turned on this isn't like what it's used to be uh, back a couple of years ago where you know if you're streaming or recording and game mode to mess up your games that's not the case anymore just leave this on it will give you the nice performance stuff just all around in uh for windows so they only have that turned on and then we're going to want to go to graphics mode when we go to game mode change default graphics make sure hardware accelerated gpu scheduling is turned on i forgot to cover that a little bit ago but make sure this turned on uh it'll just you know improve performance and juice out everything you got in your pc so leave that turned on i think it's like a couple frames difference but if you want to juice everything out this is perfect and then if you guys, this is an optional step, you don't have to do it. And I'll talk about why you don't have to do it here. But if you want to go back to your, you know, program files, x86, Steam, Steam Maps, Common, Halo Infinite, you're going to want to go to Halo Infinite, show more properties, properties. Um, you could, you know, tick disable full screen optimizations or run this program as administrator. Uh, you could do this if you're not streaming recording, if you're streaming recording for some reason, this is only on my side. I haven't done testing or I haven't had anyone else try this yet. Uh, so if you want to do this, leave a comment down below. But for some reason, if you have these both ticked or one or the other ticked, um, game capture won't work at all for OBS. So I leave this unchecked and I don't think there's that much performance difference anyways. But if you really want to juice out your system, I would take these. So yeah, one of the last things you want to do is go ahead and press the Windows key, type in choose a power plan, and then you're going to want to tick high performance. I don't really notice too much with ultra performance. So if you have that, you could tick it uh, for me. High performance, it's it's fine. But again, just like with the disable full screen optimizations, uh, you could always do ultra performance, but I have high performance. So that does it. The best performance settings for Halo Infinite Season 2. I hope this guide helped you out a lot. I know this game's a little bit more, you know, better optimized in Season 2, but it still has a long way of going. So I hope these settings helped you guys. I know there's some different stuff you can do in your PC, but to do this simple and as quick as possible for you guys to help you guys out, especially for people who don't know how to navigate through your games files and all that. So I hope this helped you out a lot. Leave a like if you're new and subscribe if you guys like Halo content. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. All right. Later.